Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 57 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will answer them the best way that I can. First one is called watched one of your vids. And it goes a little something like this. Hi, Mark. Where to start? I watched They Hide God with the Biggest Lie Ever and have to say up front that it was very well put together presentation. Very well done. I never thought I would ever watch or listen to any Flat Earth presentation due to my initial assumption that it would be coming from a hardcore Christian viewpoint. And this is not to say I have anything against the Christian faith. Notice I didn't say religion, but faith. In my opinion, there is a big difference. The teachings of Christ are very no-nonsense, very common-sense ways of living life and have much validity, whereas the religion is or has been taken over and corrupted to a great extent within the mainstream churches and such. You make some very good points in the presentation and really got me thinking, however, due to my extensive knowledge in certain fields of research. There, of course, were many points of contention where I could probably give a run for your money on certain points in a debate on this subject. I am very much aware of the fact that in ancient times and up until recently that the flat earth notion was very much entrenched and was never questioned. There are certain schools of thought that point to things being heliocentric due to plain old physics, but more importantly, a superset of physics that are not aware, that most are not aware of because they are taboo. I like to call it the real physics, not the pseudoscience they teach in universities and grade school. One of the fields in this real physics I will mention is hyperdimensional physics, which necessitates the existence of planetary bodies and stars and galaxies, and ultimately the universe itself to be spherical in nature. This is demonstrated through much experimental data that has been acquired over the last many decades and centuries. Much of this research has been driven by ancient knowledge about the nature of the sphere along with the rest of the platonic solids. As Richard Hoagland, li as Richard Hoagland likes to say, it's rotation, rotation, rotation. One has to look into this esoteric and suppressed knowledge to get a real understanding of the heliocentric model. I think that this model has been suppressed for millennia due to the secrets it will reveal since the enforcement of the Flat Earth model for millennia. The forbidden tech, a la free energy and anti-gravity propulsion systems that have been known about since at least World War II by necessity have to be based on a heliocentric model. I am sure that you will agree with me that the powers that be have kept many, many secrets from us for millennia and have lied and lied and lied some more for God knows how long. That being said, you would have to agree that if, the, if these hidden technologies were real, they would undoubtedly suppress this knowledge in order to use it for their own advancements and personal gains. Which again brings me to say that the heliocentric model had to be suppressed for as long as possible if, as these technologies are firmly based in the nature of the sphere and the energy dynamics here therein. Holy smokes. Uh, this goes on for another three pages, but you know what? I'm going to cut that one off just because I, I mean, yeah, I, I get his points, but if he doesn't believe in the flat earth, he, he believes that the heliocentric model is actually hidden uh, and he was going in another direction. You know what? Let's cut that one off. This, this, that was the one I was, I was, I couldn't even read the last time. I couldn't end with it. You know what? I don't even really want to open it with it. Thank you, Kevin Smith. Uh, for writing and you have a lot of interesting points here and I did read through the rest of it uh, but I'm not gonna not gonna share it with my listeners at this moment moving on let's jump to uh, this one very brief uh, this one's called no subject mark wow you actually changed my life and it's in plain sight thank you very much because cr crazy is not taking this seriously. I'm Steve for London. It's actually not even a shock. It's just opening your eyes. Uh, okay. Thank you, Stephen. Awesome. 
This one's called Survival Guide. Go figure. Uh, hello, Mark. My husband came across some Flat Earth videos around August last year and was completely hooked. He started showing me some videos, and yeah, I'm completely convinced we do not live on a globe. We love watching your videos on YouTube and are actually listening to you live for the first time on TFR tonight. Anyway, I heard you mention the Survival Guide and would love a copy of that. Thanks for all you do, and God bless. Janice. Uh, happy to do it, Janice, and anyone, yeah, if you put survival guide in the title of any video, or I'm sorry, any email that you send to me, I will send you a copy of Empty Shelves, which is a 100-page survival guide. I got, send it to you for free, because survival should be free, well, at least the concept of it anyway, and I, I will shoot, it's only like two megs, I don't have to send it through WeTransfer or anything, and you guys can have it, and so whenever you hear me say that, that's because it, it's perpetual. I keep people keep asking for survival guides, and I keep reading them in the emails, and so more people keep asking for more survival guides, which is fine. This one's called Moon Size. Mark, why does the moon appear very large when it rises, then gets smaller as it travels across the sky? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Even the mainstream science doesn't know. Uh, best guess, only because of what the research that the flat Earth has been doing, would be atmospheric lensing at the horizon. <clears throat> meaning at the horizon, when you're looking at it, you're, pro you're looking through a whole bunch of uh, a very thick atmosphere. And I think maybe perspective-wise, it thins out as the moon rises higher in the sky. So you're looking through less lensing and then it gets smaller. That's, that's my best guess. Because, because, yeah, I mean, some people say, well, it's perspective. It always looks bigger when it's, you know, next to a hill. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, some people should, should get like a... Um, whatever it is, uh, you know, measure the circle in their camera. And then when it gets higher in the sky, measure it again and see if it gets smaller. I, I think it does. This one's called, I know you're busy, but hi, Mark. I was just wondering if you would like to get together sometime. I'd like to buy you dinner and I'm happy to travel to the island to make it convenient for you. Nothing important. Just want to hang out and get to know each other better. I realize that you're a very busy person and won't be hurt or offended if you can't, but I hope you can. Sincerely, David. And yeah, I, I pro if you're up in the Northwest, I, there's a chance you may be able to meet up with me. Uh, I don't go out to a ton of meetups that are outside of the state, uh, but I will write this guy back and, and hopefully we can, we can do something. It really depends. There's a lot of family things that are coming up real soon, but yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Moving on. This one's called the sun is a lens system. Mark, the governments, they don't want chaos and panic when people see these planets. Look up on YouTube. It's, it's, that's all in caps. And I'm, am I supposed to look up the sun as a lens system? Okay, if you guys get a chance, look at that up. The sun is a lens system. Moving on. This one's called God's Children. Hello, Mark. Thank you for the great video about the Flat Earth Clues. I want to open your eyes for one more conspiration and nationally nationality that with every single year goes by get buried in history are fading away i will be happy if you contact me for more information and details it's about bulgarians i don't know what you know about them but mainly most of the americans think that we are gypsies <laughs> i didn't know that honestly I, I i've heard of gypsies of course but i didn't know they were tied to any one country and only bad things but this is a lie but my information is not about that it's very interesting at least for me not just because I am Bulgarian. I'm sorry if my English is not on decent level. Once again, thank you for your time and wish you all the best. And that's from Panayat Petkov. And if you're listening, send me whatever information you got. You don't have to uh, just send me whatever you got. Assume that whatever, if you send me a, a, an email that says, hey, I've got more information for you, just send it. Assume I'm going to say yes. I'm never, I'm never going to say, I've never written a guy and said, no, I don't want any more information on that. So this one's from Luis Torres and it's basically just him laughing and it's a link and the link is how far is the earth from the moon? Take a look yourself. <laughs> and it's a, I don't know if that's a picture or if that's a real picture taken from the Osiris probe or not but it's the worst earth ever and i mean it's just two basically two dots on a screen and it was posted uh at, what is it quartz media so the article is called look how far is the earth from the moon take a look at yourself yeah it's horrible yeah check. i can't even use that for a, a um a slideshow picture but thank you for that
This one's called Survival Guide. Shalom, Mr. Sergeant. May Yah bless you in all the days of your life and to your loved ones. I praise Yah for you, and I thank you for your relentless search for the truth. Thank you also for your service to what I believe is still a great nation because of people like you. I look forward to your survival guide as I have misplaced my soldier's handbook from basic training. Uh, be blessed, Sergeant. Be blessed. That's from Melanie. Yes, Melanie, I have actually sent you your guide. And again, all you have to do is email me. Just put it somewhere in the uh, head, in the header usually. And that's all you have. You don't even have to say hi. Just say survival guide. I want it. You don't have to be rude. And I rarely do I get that. No one's ever said, give me that survival guide, bitch. But moving on. This one's called Show You Should Watch. Watch the Orville. Watch the, the show The Orville. If the Stars Should Appear, Season 1, Episode 4. It's about an enclosed world. Yeah, very interesting, and I did watch it. Several people recommended that to me. The show is called Orville, O-R-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Season 1, Episode 4. And we're in the first season of Orville. And it's about the like a Star Trek type of ship that comes across a giant ship that people think they're on a planet. They're thinking on, on an actual world. It's just a domed spaceship with everything on the inside it's completely fabricated fascinating fascinating yeah why 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 couldn't we bet that be that so this next one's called programming templates and flat earth warning hi mark i am a software developer and i've developed apps personally see the bible of many colors on android and apple a good software developer is a lazy software developer because a lazy one will create scripts to automate processes reuse code and <clears throat> use templates so don't worry about the dates on your app <clears throat> sorry about that guys a frog in my throat your apps were defiantly templates i know you're not worried i just wanted to point out the dates on your app aren't a big deal it's oh yeah, that's this whole metatron thing it's actually a sign of a more efficient programmer i also have a warning for all my fellow flat earthers out there i was recently working on an app called vaccine adverse reactions what you need to know it has the full vaccine inserts from the cdc that the doctors won't share here are some of the scariest adverse reactions cancer shedding the vaccine to the unvaccinated death to non-vaccinated people from shedding from vaccinated people people who don't get the vaccine died from the shedding from someone who got the vaccine that's a scary thought you and your family could avoid getting vaccinated but still be affected by vaccines through shedding i don't know what shedding is is that like secondhand smoke or, or like uh losing skin cells you know through like uh, what they call it dander you know creating dust i really just want to get this information out there to help thanks for all you do mark and stay flat and that's from Rhett. so okay i now know this this one's called curvature from the beach argument hi there holy father great father of flat earth reference from the denver post always love to hear that i am a longtime listener love your work etc et trying to help you here listening to q a emails and hearing you bring up that people say that they see curvature from the beach beach you say they can't i think you are wrong here they can let me explain so you will have a better explanation for the phenomena i too saw curvature from the beach slight one slight one but noticeable why i believe it's because of the fisheye lens effect our eyes have a slight curve at the point where light enters the inner area and we are without any additional optics already see a curve and you know what exactly like with the fisheye lens we can see concavity i did at the same beach so when people stare at the point a little below the horizon line they will see the curve do not get me wrong here staring exactly at the horizon line will not give you a curve but moving center sight lower can produce the curve you do not see it with straight vision but it becomes visible with a top or side one same applies for achieving concavity look above and perceive it with side or in this case lower view so instead of telling them they can't see what they obviously see maybe you should try and tell them to stare above the horizon line a cloud a bird anything above the horizon line and see if they can be honest with themselves and admit they perceive concavity just like they perceive the curve there is that is the only explanation i can think of it works for me hope it helps of course there is no curve keep it flat best regards michael and you're absolutely right, Michael. What I, what I try to tell them, actually, when you when you hear me say this stuff to people, 
is that you think you see the curve. Now, subconsciously, yeah, they, they might actually think they see it, but that's why I tell them to always to take a picture. I say, fine, you think you see a curve, take a picture, put it on your laptop, put a straight edge up to it and tell me if that curve's still there. If it's still there, send it to me and I'll quit flat earth, but they never ever do because they put it on their laptop, they take pictures, there is no there is no curvature. But yeah, you, you have a point. Uh, so I will be kinder, a kinder, gentler, debater when it comes out say but i i think pretty sure i've said it before which is you think you see a curve you don't actually see a curve um <clears throat> this one's called survival guide big shock there thank you mark for reading my letter last night think of all my word think of all my words and you accidentally skipping to mine you forgot my survival guide please send when you get a chance thank you ryan very welcome ryan and i sent that one to you this one is called pressure differences under a dome suggestion. Hi, Mark. I know you're. I'm talking about stuff from long ago, uh, but here is another explanation that I hope you will find helpful. You read an email, and the person was asking about if you believe in a dome, how can we have different pressures inside? You went sideways. I think you're in your explanation with a cup uh, of water and deep lake. I don't think I've ever used the cup of water in deep lake. Pretty sure I've never used it. I, I can't even imagine using that that analogy. The person was asking about weather. One day pressure is low, the other day is high, and a city 100 miles away. Totally different ones. I'm a huge fan of electromagnetic explanation for the things, so I suggest you use this one. Electromagnetic effects of the luminaries, invisible objects, underground systems. Take your pick, and will it will affect the atmosphere for sure look up experiments with electromagnetic fields they can make heavy objects levitate and not only those of metal they levitate also known have also known as have lesser pressure on surface below only in the area of electromagnetic field one feet foot to the side and it weighs normally again who is to say there is no huge em fields wandering the plane following the sun the moon or any underground maintenance unit question mark and to this soup frequency and vibration oh boy screen just backed up I'll tell you comcast in their email uh, um, uh, also can vary around the plane and there you have it in some places air molecules push harder down and in other places not hard at all these effects electromagnetic fields frequency vibrations also apply to the air density as well it varies all over the place <clears throat> be it under the dome or under infinite ceiling enclosed or ventilated now what causes those effects many things can do let's just name the sun and the moon both are extremely powerful electromagnetic fields other than that your guess is as good as mine we know so little about how the system works that it can be anything stuff we discover i hope one day i hope this helps thanks a lot for your work michael Welcome, Michael. Next one. Hey, look at that. Another survival guide. But this one actually has stuff in it. Mark, thank you for the guide. Well, I'm a, well, I'm amazed. You just... You, you might just be what you imply you are. Just a regular person who means and does what they say. Didn't expect that. I was just listening to yesterday's post, Strange World 132, and thought I'd follow through with your offer just in case it was genuine. I'm glad you see it is genuine. I've been listening for about a year, and your logic and interview testimonials have opened my eyes. My investigation began with a random YouTube suggestion, first piqued my curiosity, and I searched Flat Earth. I found your videos and Rob Skiba's explanations to be the most enlightening. I appreciate the informative graphics and charts you coordinate with the audio. Everything I see is through a different lens now. I have been a believer and follower of Christ since early childhood, and these new understandings have made my faith even more secure. I was raised in the Northwest, and I live near Bend, Oregon. I am a 58-year-old grandmother, having fun with two of my munchkins during Christmas break. Wow, you have munchkins? It's awesome. I thought those were like banned, like illegal in the United States. And an elementary school teacher since 1989. One of my second grade students last year had parents who were just beginning to discover Flat Earth at the same time I was. We had something, we had some interesting conversations in class about it when he insisted the science text was wrong and that Earth was flat. I handled it by letting him share his view and telling students that good scientists always begin with a question, then go check it out. I asked them to talk to their folks about it and see what they believe and why they believe it. 
As for the globe in my class, a funny thing happened. The stand broke, so I threw it in the closet. No more globe to subliminally brainwash my kiddos. I have so much more to learn, so please keep sharing your videos and testimonials. If you read this on air, please don't share my name. You can just call me G. Gratefully enlightened. And I won't say what G stands for. But really, how many names start with, with the letter G? I'm sure you can guess. And it's not Gilligan. It's the other one. This one's called Ice Ring. Dis Dear Mr. Sergeant, when you look at a globe model, Antarctica looks like a mat of ice at the South Pole. How does it translate to a ring of ice around the circle? Help, I can't see it. And that's from Share for Real. Uh, look up the AE map. That's the best way. As Muffle Equidistant map. Or look at the... Yeah, just just go into... It's, it's easy. Just go into... Google and type in azimuthal equidistant map or projection and you'll see Antarctica. It's stretched around the outside. I know it's, it, 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 it takes a little while to, to get your mind used to it, but it's not that bad. This one's called, this is funny, Mark. I'll be the judge of that. Hi, Mark. Web surfing. I saw a link to an article with a title, something like three billion year old gravity waves detected. I laughed. Obviously you can make this shit up. Unfortunately, I didn't bother to either go to the story, why would I, or bookmark it. I want to bring it to your attention, though, because you have an excellent sense of humor. In preparing to send this, however, I couldn't find a story with a remembered title. This is as close as I can get. Science detect gravitational waves from black holes colliding three billion light years from Earth. I guess using their cockamamie, uh, that's a word I do not use a lot, cosmology, it amounts to the same thing. And yeah, the Washington Post uh, did that article back in the middle of the summer of last year. Anyway, thanks for all the F.E. you do. I love the videos. My favorites are the ones in which you interview pilots, navigators, the travel agent, etc., and especially the surveyor. My all-time fave, though, is one with the industrial valve and seal guy. Yeah, a lot of people like that guy. Yeah, right. The ISS is going on 20 years up there, and there's no machine shop. Ha. It's amazing. Nobody believes that. And for the gravity waves, how can they detect something they can't even prove exists? Because NASA, of course. Keep up the great work, please. That's from M. Nick. I think Nick is his last name. This next one, if I can get past this screen, is called Hi from a New Believer. Mark, thanks for all your info on the video. My question is, how can I teach my kids this new truth? They are five and nine and think the earth is round, etc. How can we handle this? What else do we not know or are being lied about? And that's from Carlos Herboso. And what I will do is I will send him a link to, I'll put that in my to-do pile. And I will send him a link to Flat Earth shortlist for new people. Anybody that's that's trying to get, and I don't care what age group it is, there's there's a lot of good stuff in there. Just type in Flat Earth Shortlist for new people and you will see the list. Uh, it's In fact, only one of them is mine. The, the other 20-something are just people all over the place. I think uh, I start with, oh, who do I start with? The lat, Flat Earth litmus, litmus Test by Marty Leeds. And... I go from there. But there's, a, there's stuff ranging from five minutes to two hours. Highly recommend it for anyone you're trying to convert. This one's called Flat Earth Map. Hi, Mark. Was curious if you know of a Flat Earth map that shows all the pyramids. Thanks, Julia Hall. No, I, I don't know that. I mean, and are we talking about legitimate pyramids or the ones they're hiding in China or the ones that we, we can't necessarily prove yet because they're buried in, in Bosnia, the Bosnian pyramids? Uh, or are we talking about just the Mexican one or the ones in Central America and Mexico and the ones in, in the Middle East? Because there's a lot of them out there. Bottom line is there is not a comprehensive map that covers all that. Sorry. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, where are the east and west and north edges? I have traveled the world and have yet to find them. I traveled by boat. That's from Terry Jones. Terry is obviously not a believer. He's trying to be cute. There are no north, south, and east wedges, edges, wedges. There, there aren't. The, uh, the, the compass really means nothing. Uh, there, all, all there really is is an inner and outer circle. But I see where he's going. I'm not going to entertain that one anymore because he should know better. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Hello, my name is Colton Sievert. I'm 100% a flat earther. However, 
There is one question I can't answer, and that is if the North Star is right above the North Pole, which is in the center of the Flat Earth model, then why can both the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere see the North Star? If you can answer this or send me a link that helps me, I would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Multiple display systems. It's what we do in software and simulations now. We've been doing it for 15 or more years. Uh, you think both sides are seeing the exact same North Star, and you are not. You are seeing multiple instances, which if, which if your developer is a realization of an object, you're seeing multiple instances of the same star based on where you are. Moving on. <clears throat> this one's called Flat Earth Testimony. Uh, boy, I don't know if I want to read this one because it's... Uh, you know what? I'll read it. It's it doesn't the it's it's not that long, but it's it has no paragraph breaks, so I'm gonna have to just kind of wing it. Hey, Mark, been listening and following for a year and a half. You're by far my biggest listen on videos and research. I've been listening to all your subject matter experts and maybe 40 other videos by you. Started out with Dave Murphy and Eric DeBay via Rob Skiba and his Genesis 6 videos. I'm a professional raw food nutritionist, herbalist, and naturopathic doctor. Learning truth isn't anything new for me with 15 years of research into the alternative healing practices and as all topics considered conspiracy go, I have several connect the dot type stories for you. First is two years ago in Cannon Mountain in New Hampshire, which is located roughly 120 miles from the uh, and, uh, Adrianic Mountains in New York. I was at the peak 4,800 feet about near a binocular viewfinder and told the gondola driver of 20 plus years that I wondered if I could see Whiteface Mountain from here. He said, actually, yes, you can go to the viewfinder right next to you. This was before Flat Earth was on my radar. Nonetheless, I just assumed the world was flat in my mind, never considering that this far off peak should be buried underneath the curve. He told me to look between two mountain peaks in Vermont to the west southwest and you will see White Face Mountain sticking slightly above and in between. The two peaks I was looking through were called Camel's Hump Mountains and he said, and of course I did see White Face just the same with its identifiable peak. Uh, I'd seen my entire life from Plattsburgh, New York. The viewfinder was at dead level just as the horizon always is no matter how high you go. Some months later, after stumbling across Flat Earth with Rob Skiba's videos, I did the math and there is 120 miles between the two peaks. They're both 4,800 feet or so with Camel's Hump at 4,100 feet. I Google mapped it and it was a straight line of sight just as I saw. I put the numbers in the curved Earth calculator and drew some diagrams and I realized a few things. Firstly, I shouldn't have seen the peak of Whiteface on a curve. I should have seen... Uh, I, it should have been behind the Vermont peak. Secondly, I should have been looking downward with the viewfinder over that 120 mile expanse with white face just below the horizon. Thirdly, I should have, and this goes for all mountain peaks and clouds and waterways flowing uphill and downhill by some sort of magic, have had every single thing I saw curving away from me and dropping away at the sides in all directions. Technically, I was at the top of the world where I was, where I was on the supposed globe Earth. Since I know the Earth is easily provable as flat and every culture on Earth knew this too, before the theories of the above, the lower the, uh, lower the peaks, the Vermont was 60 miles between the other side, and both my peak and white face peak and dead, dead center 700 feet lower to be exact. This is impossible in any other case. I've given this exact scenario to non-believing friends of mine, especially ones in construction and, of course, a surveyor as well, and they dismiss everything. Concrete pouring and building large structures on a ball are impossible. At 8, eight inches per mile squared, I can shrink that math down to 2 inches per 1,000 feet near about and ask the same question to these same folks on how they can build a structure even 500 feet apart on each wall with one inch drop away on all sides and how level could possibly be identical to each person measuring building the same structure. Your baseboards and your roof are two different lengths and your walls are falling away. They ignore that too. To me, this is so simple, it's ridiculous. I'm an extremely critical thinker, so I, po I suppose to most folks who don't care for the truth, the finer details, that is easy to fool them. The subject of UFOs and aliens are easily explained within the fallen angels and Nephilim incursion of Genesis 6 and the book of Enoch's description. One thing 
almost every ufologist, 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 will either bury or conceal for fear of not wanting to go there is that you can stop an abduction experience by bringing up the name of Jesus Christ. Really? It has been done for hundreds of years, to my knowledge. My job is to not only identify problems, but get to the source and also offer a natural solution. The claim to cast out these demons, or what everyone calls aliens, is brought up in many different ways in a couple documentaries on the Watchers series on Amazon Prime. They built the megalithic structures as giants before the flood on a flat surface. All legends can be traced to the Bible stories. Once flat earth is known, all other things can be tied to this. Government control of UFOs by not addressing them has the tech, of course, and we are seeing a mixture of them and aliens. Everything we know and experience is contained under the firmament. Our very short history on this earth has revealed one thing to me, that man cannot be trusted to tell the truth when motivation for lies is paid for by money and power. Keeping the earth round keeps the population insignificant and godless and without reason for being. So buy that flat screen now because it's all insignificant. Since we know the earth is flat, as we have known for almost an entirety of our history, now we have a purpose and a reason for being here and why we should help one another and not be selfish or act without eternal consequence. The flat earth is proof of a creator. This means so much to me as it is absolute proof of creation and God. I just want to say thank you, Mark, for all your work to you and Rob and many others. Keep it going. And if you deem this leather worthy to read on air, I'll be listening. Thanks, Andrew from New York. Wow, that was long. All right. Just a quick tip to Andrew and anybody else there. If you're writing me a letter, insert paragraph breaks. <laughs> Punctuation and grammar was fine on this, but my God, it's it's hard to, I mean, we're talking a wall of text here. I mean, just the, the paragraph, paragraph breaks, people. Come on. But thank you for that, Andrew. It was, it was, a, it was a nice letter and I appreciate it. And uh, write me more stuff. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, like I said, I have traveled the earth. Oh boy, this is the same guy. Uh, or not, not the, the, the guy on the boat that I, I, he's doing this again. Like I've said, he's trying to troll me. I've tried to, I have traveled the earth by ship and I think you are full of shit. <laughs> nice. Please do convince me as of you versus my lying eyes. I take nothing at face value, including your theory. So give me pictures of it. Like you suggest we cannot have a space exploration. Show me real tangible proof. Where is your video? What are you talking about? I made a thousand videos on flat earth. You don't want to, you're too lazy to, to watch anything on my channel. Go ahead. You know what? Maybe, you know what I'll do for this guy? I will. I don't think he's actually been to my channel. I think he just watched their hiding God or under the dome full documentary or something. I'll send him to my channel. And, and uh, usually when somebody writes me a troll letter, I just, I say, pin, my, my standard response is opinions vary. And then I'll send him the testimonial list of all the 20 something people from all uh, the branches of government and, and uh, the surveyors and the air traffic controllers and all those guys, pilots that talk about flat earth. And usually that just makes them even more pissed off. This one's called elaboration. Hi again, Marco. That's the first time anyone's called me that. I bet you they're not from here. I'm the lad that a couple of months ago sent you the thing about flying an airplane at the equator as a flat versus globe test. I feel that I should expand on the point a bit more. My suggestion was more along the line of using a proper passenger jet or a big private jet plane. I was thinking that it would that it really would not have to take that long before you had to bank to one side. If the earth really is flat, but the globe is true, you would never have to do it as long as it is exactly on the equator. It is, of course, an expensive test, but nowhere close to an Arctic expedition or something along those lines. Okay, that's that regarding that. Let's move once again over to the biblical stuff to come to the conclusion that the scriptures is, in fact, True throughout was hard, and I mean really hard for me. I fought against it for years. As an ex-hardcore atheist, say, listen to this atheist out there, I looked at every other explanation and turned every stone, but I still couldn't make any sense of the aspects in regard to the full story. You know, 9-11, No World Order, Alien, Satanists, Flat Earth, all of it. I dug in deeply into alien abductions, and what I came back to again and again was the fact that there are heaps and heaps of evidence for it actually being demonic in nature. 
the countless examples of people being able to stop these abductions midway through just by rebuking them, the aliens, in the name of Yeshua, really a diff completely different person. They're actually bringing this up. Like, you can stop an uh, abduction? Why would you want to? It'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? It was something that I really could not explain in any other, in any other way than that there must be something to this biblical thing. And if you look into demonic possession i mean with proper objectivity you will find that it is real that it really happens a lot and the above mentioned solution is applicable there as well these are of course just a couple of things which drove me towards the view that i now keep but they are something that really should not be overlooked anyway for your reading's sake i will not ramble on as you may might not want to read this otherwise no, i'm reading it love you man and i really respect the way you handle all the things being thrown at you kind and level-headed that's what you are as i said in my last email i've been listening and watching from the start and we'll keep doing so all the best much love from sweden johan told you it wasn't from here you can always tell if they're not completely american but that's fine this one's called lynx mark i enjoyed your flat earth on youtube however the links are missing and i would like to follow those to their interesting conclusions diane and yeah, you're absolutely right. The original clues, which I made, had some links below. And now you're just going to have to look for them yourself because I realized that as I was making more and more videos on YouTube that I had to update stuff. And, and when you're updating, when it was just 100 videos or 200 videos and you had to update something in the description box for everything, you have to do it in mass. You basically have to say, update all descriptions simultaneously. And so I... And that means I have to overwrite all my descriptions every time I do it because I'm up to a thousand videos now. And that and I can do it in two seconds. It's like, okay, update all the descriptions, but I, all the descriptions have to be the same. So the links are gone. So unfortunately, you're just going to have to look for the links yourself. Sorry about that. This one's called Hiding God. Dearest Mark, your YouTube video is quite interesting, but what is most intriguing about this thought is the one thing you are trying to disprove or prove considering your own perspective and or point of view. I am a longtime faith walker and follow the truth, so I am writing this email to you. I want to know that I have no reason to persuade or have any discord on this matter whatsoever. I just thought it would be nice to share some thoughts as well. It occurs, occurs to me quite often, this is what most people always forget when having faith, that it is the one undisputed fact that everyone must face in their own faith, walk with God. It is the fact that God does not need a PR person to represent him to, I'm sorry, represent him or to undeniably prove he himself exists. He himself proves that to each individual alone, privately, through their spirit. The God, the creator, the designer, the universe, source, whatever you feel most comfortable or want to call it, it is the most constant, I'm sorry, screwing some of these up, it is the one constant since the beginning of time that everyone must come to their own truth in their own understanding and in their own time. It must be done on their own timeline. No one else can prove God exists for anyone else except their spirit and themselves. That is why it is freedom of choice to believe. Free will is the constant. Moreover, to prove that the human race has lied is just another flaw in your overall expressional concern. Mm. The creator doesn't need us to prove he exists or to prove they or we all have it wrong about the truth. He has it all covered. No play on words there. There is no real cover up ever when it comes to, to the creator, except for the fact that the human race in all its glory and or the people are not yet ready for the truth or humans just can't see the truth yet. Just consider the fact that either way, there is a reason why we as humans are not ready for the grand truth yet. The creator has always been there and always will be there. The firmament is there for our protection. There are many things that humans are not quite ready for, and the truth is just part of it. Also, stop for a moment and think for just a minute and consider the fact that science and the creator might be one. They might not be on opposing sides. He is a genius. I'll give you that. Don't you think he is smart enough to have already worked out all the details, already and taken the many precautions and put into place the many contingency plans for this human race to succeed and prosper? Have you considered the fact that maybe you too are missing a couple of very important points to the creator's overall plan? Do you really think that the creator has to lie to his own children to create the perfect environment for there to grow in? 
We as humans often get caught up in the minutia of the details instead of seeing the big picture. It is probably the most common flaw of most humans. Keep asking these questions. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and door shall open. Be blessed and love your fellow man. Mia Galeando. Not to be confused with Delemundo. Thank you, Mia, for that. It's actually a well, well-written letter. I like that. Uh, we're going to pump through a couple of the survival guides. Mar survival, this one's called Survival Prep Pack to UK Shaun of the Dead. Hi, Mark. Have you seen UK movie Shaun of the Dead? Absolutely, I have. It's one of my one of my favorite directors is involved in that. Edgar Wright. If you want to watch a director that just can't make a loser right now. And no, I'm not talking about James Cameron. James Cameron only, only makes winner winning movies but uh edgar wright makes some fantastic movies he also did he was the guy not only do Shaun of the dead uh and hot fuzz but he did uh, one of my the movies i just keep watching over and over and, and still get more details which is scott pilgrim versus the world look at the cast casting of scott pilgrim it's amazing um okay Shaun of the dead 2004 film with a spin on dawn of the dead yes uh, yeah dawn of the dead and the remake of dawn of the dead the original dawn of the dead was in the 70s set in a mall and the remake which i think was done in 2003 i think with ving rames that was also done in a mall it was much grittier and it was done by i think it was done by Zack snyder so uh it's a look on how us brits deal with zombies having no guns over here of course very funny keep up the great work cheers davy from hamilton scotland uh, yeah, one of the scariest movies I ever watched was uh, not a lot of movies scare me, but it was it was concerning to me. <laughs> I was I was unnerved by it, and that was a zombie movie set in England. It was called Twenty Eight Days Later, and of course the 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 remake was called Twenty Eight Weeks Later. And the reason why is because most of your zombie movies are set in the United States because we have a whole bunch of guns over here, but in England nobody really has guns. So you gotta you gotta hack and slash your way. You gotta go hand to hand. You gotta do old school sledgehammers and machetes and. And, uh, and so yeah going after zombies and 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 they were fast zombies on top of it it wasn't they weren't slow zombies so you combine the two and 28 days later you're just oh, you're just hoping you can yeah you're rooting for them but you don't have much hope because just, until they get with the military but that's a whole nother thing all right this one's called survival guide by nick uh hi mark been awake for over 10 years and a really hard time trying to get people to listen to let, a whole, let alone comprehend knowledge I have accumulated over the years. Things that would require research and thinking outside the box seem unimportant to most people, but I still plant seeds when I can. Great job and keep up the good work. Please, can you email me a copy of your survival guide when you get a chance? Best regards. Nick from Wiltshire, UK. Yep. We'll send you a guide. Already did, as a matter of fact. This one's called, Hey Mark, and I have the PDF Call Throne of God Harmony. Thank you. And that's from Saul. Uh, yeah, I also have another thing out there. There was a, the air traffic controllers that were talking. There was a flight instructor and an air traffic controller that did the same show on True Frequency Radio on during Strange World. And they were just talking to each other. I just let them talk. And the air traffic controller actually wrote a book where he was kind of trying to unite all the cosmology thing and he called it throne of god uh, but it, actually on my machine it's called harmony it is not a light read but if you got anyone wants it you can also just email me and say hey can i get a copy of that and it's like okay i will but i I've, I've yet had to have anyone after i've sent it to him come back and say this changed my life it's it's really a tough read i mean i i only kind of glanced through it all right, moving on. This one's called Flatter Song for Your Playlist. Hi, Mark. This time I was up all night again, this time partying with legend Tom Petty. <laughs> uh-huh. So we whittled out another Flatter Song for you. Enjoy it, Mark. Uh, it's a variation of Won't Back Down, and it's by a guy called Zane. And his channel, literally, his, his YouTube channel is called Zane, Z-A-N-E. So he's been cranking out a whole bunch of flat earth cover songs, just taking mainstream songs and turning them into, you know, changing the lyrics around. And they're all pretty good. So I'm subscribed to him and the reviews are funny. He's, is he on key all the time? No, he is not. But it's interesting. Some, and pick some, some good songs. So check that out when you get a chance. This one's called New to the Flat Earth Belief. Good morning, Mark. I recently watched videos on YouTube from Flat Earthers and couldn't really believe it. But then I told myself I want to do my own research. I'm very logical and smart 
that some of the things mentioned the, in these videos make perfect sense to me. So much sense that I had to question myself and what truth is. I'm not sure how I came across your videos, but I watched the clues that you explained and I think it's terrifying. The design and structure that was made. It opened my eyes and now I keep researching more and more. I feel in my gut that the history of science facts that I discover are true. I still want to research more, but I definitely believe the, this earth isn't round. My question to you is, who do you think the elites are? Obviously NASA, but I believe it's one person or persons and huge corporations like that. Maybe the employees have no idea. Also other flat earthers, do you keep spreading the message? But with that message, what do you do then? And lastly, I was raised Christian, so the Bible verses really stick out to me and I believe persuaded me more than any other fact found. I do believe in God and believe to continue to follow the commandments to survive this terrifying earth. Look forward to hearing from you. I will keep watching your videos. Thanks, Kulani. And let me answer the, the one question. Okay, one, he he answered his own question, which is flatters are just, just keep spreading the message. That's what we got to keep doing until we hit the tipping point. And we're, we're, we're gaining on it. I know that. As far as who the elites are, you got to remember the first rule of power is stay hidden. And that is the true people of power absolutely have to stay anonymous because... The general population is huge. It's like a they've, they've done kind of analogies of this over the years, which is it's the, the general population is like a lumbering beast that you do not want to tick off because they'll burn things down. You know, they'll burn buildings down and castles down. The, the long version is true power. You never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown, meaning the masses can't come to your castle and burn it down if they don't know who you are. So be the puppet master if you're if you're in power that so what i'm saying is we don't know who the true power i mean yeah again you can name rattle off all these other groups but they're just groups that are part of a bigger whole and who's at the top top tippy top don't know but it's it's not the illuminati general it's not the the bilderbergs or the rothschilds or the trilateral commission or the vatican you know take your pick who, who's higher in all those groups that we're talking about the masons there's everyone's got their own piece of the pie but there's got to be, you're right, at the very, very top, these are people that don't care about money. It, money is actually irrelevant to them. So don't know who they are. That's, you know, it's the shell game to keep us guessing. This one's called, wow, it's a long one. I'm definitely not reading this. But it was sent to me by Gus. And uh, let's see here. Passed away. Eh, you know what? Maybe I will read this or part of it. Sure. Why not? Okay. The, this one's uh, goes, hello, Mr. It's called uh, Kevin Gus Hall follow up phone message. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. Throughout my lifetime of 53 years, I've been asking the tough questions, writing blogs, books, etc. I re I, I won't read this entire thing, but I'm going to read part of it. I recently came to terms with this whole flatter thing and th then the pieces of the puzzle began to take shape in big ways. My father was recruited into Motorola right out of the military after World War II. Here are a few interesting tidbits regarding his role in the war. He was in the Navy as one of the first operators of those backpack telephones by Motorola Galvin pre-1947. His job was to get dropped off on islands in Pacific and stare out over the water with binoculars, telescopes, and call in enemy ships over the portable radio device. Right after the war, he came to Chicago, met my mother, went to Coyne Electric College, and worked for Motorola. Moved to Hillside, Illinois, near Franklin Park, which was headquarters for Motorola worldwide. He was on the board of directors and the national warranty manager. He was a top executive at Motorola with a big office, sec secretary, etc. He traveled across, abroad to Texas and other places. During the space race, Motorola was key in working side by side with NASA and the supposed signals that the moon were over Motorola radios and satellites. He was responsible for suggesting that Motorola stop manufacturing car radios due to their losses, expenses, issues, and competition. Motorola got out of the business, laid off thousands, and my father became the most hated man. He lost his job after a conflict of interest. He was illegally detained, kidnapped by the Motor Motorola police, and in the end... Uh, we bought out the Motorola radio division, which included all their car radios, both new and used and defectives. And we started a chain of car stereo stores called Music Hall, uh, Stereo City Music Hall, and I am Gus Hall. Ah, I get it. He passed away in 1989. 
There are a few things in my earliest memory of him that are now starting to surface. Whether they are repressed memories or not, I don't know, but here's some facts. When I was four or five years old in 1968, 69, the moon landings, he trained me to say the following when asked, what is the sun? Me, a burning star. Where is the sun? In the center of the solar system. How far is the sun from the earth? 93 million miles away. These are my first memories of him. At the time, I thought I was smart and he was showing me off, but in hindsight, he would go through the routine whenever meeting other executives from Motorola. It was total indoctrination. I believe that he certainly knew the truth, but since he was an insider, he had to go along with the BS and had to prove to his other co-workers that he did not share the real truth with his kids. Hmm. I would go to Motorola headquarters and spin the president's high back leather chair. Motorola knew the truth. He knew the truth. Now I know the truth. He wasn't he was anti-NASA, anti-space program, and things like Star Trek and even Star Wars didn't exist in my household of five boys and a sister. How could five boys be raised not interested in the space program? He never shared Motorola's accomplishments with NASA. If he didn't have, if he didn't have reasons not to, my family would have embraced, embraced such victories, bragging rights, and other things to be proud of. If the moon missions were real, with Motorola being used to send the first moon landing signals back to earth every book report every speech ever given in my school would have reflected my father's company's part in such huge things as the first moon landings but there was no pride maybe even shame he simply never spoke about it why else would my first memories of him be those three questions i always wondered and now i know i have zero hard feelings toward him and i feel very sad and sorry for him he had to play the game because he was privy to the facts. My father was Mr. Motorola, and Motorola was the highest tech agency of the day. Before Apple, Google, Microsoft, and there was Motorola. He, he's right about that. They invented the cell phone, two-way communications, etc. Me and my brothers owned three stereo stores, and we were the largest Motorola car phone installers in the world. Before calling them cell phones, they were car phones. Yep, I had a Motorola car phone that was installed uh, in a Cadillac that I owned <laughs> right out of college. Uh, we sold and installed the most of any business. Then, with the in-dash car radios going out of style, with factory radios, with car phones becoming bag phones, then portable phones, then handhelds, our days of installing car radios and car phones ended. Huh. Interesting. Interesting stuff. So, thank you for that, Gus. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read the rest, but that's good. Good stuff. Let's see. P900 freeze joke. Uh, Mark, my buddy Josh is visiting Florida from up north as freeze warming and a massive winter storm slams the southeast. Below is a snippet of our conversation. Josh, view from the back. He shoots a, he's shooting out over the water. Lou, that's nice, but it's freezing cold water. Josh, there are people out in the ocean. Lou, hold on. Let me get my Nikon P900 camera. And Lou, you dumbass, those aren't people. Those are polar bears. That's funny. I gotcha. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the earth is flat. That's good. Set what they were just kind of looking out over the ocean and he, he puts he just slips in a picture of a polar bear swimming, which isn't a really happy picture picture because polar bears are, are supposed to be kind of hanging out on the ice. And from what I understand, uh, quite a few polar bears drown up in the Arctic because they, they can't get to their their, their food is becoming uh, more and more scarce. But let's not end on a sad note. We still got four minutes left in this. Now I'm thinking about polar bears. It's sad. This one's called My Perspective. Hi, Mark. What happened to My Perspective YouTube channel? I miss his work, Jeff from Colorado Springs. Uh, that's Rory Cooper, who you're talking about from South Africa. He's he's st he's back around. He I don't know why he dropped his entire channel. Uh, if you're gonna pull away from Flat Earth for a little while, don't pull down your channel. I mean, even even I I didn't pull away from Flat Earth. I just didn't talk to a lot of people for a while. Uh, you, you never want to pull that down because it takes too long to get everything back up. But he's he's around. So just look out. I don't know the name of his new channel, but he's he's back. He's back in. He's he's not gone. It's not like Tiger Dan. This one's called Longtime Listener. Hi, Mark. I've been a flat earther for 18 months now over the UK. While it seems quite well known over your side of the pond, I don't think it has taken hold over here yet, but I'm sure it will. However, I was catching up on your email bag show and was pleased to hear about the success of the chat room pylons. And this got me thinking, surely both Bill Nye and NDT have agents and agents have phone numbers, right? Simon from Manchester, UK. Uh, I don't think Bill Nye is a handler because he's just oblivious to everything. NDT, though, he is the face of science. So I think that he, um, uh, I, I think NDT has a handler. I don't know who his, his agent is, though. This one's called You Were In My Dream. Oh, wow. Okay. 
No, it's not a not a girl. Hi, Mark. You know how weird dreams can be. In my dream, I found myself in a large auditorium and you came over and we started talking. You explained that this was a flat earth meeting and you started pointing out different people that I was familiar with in the flat earth community. I then introduced myself. Mark, I'm magic art from Las Vegas, the retired magician. So then you started to show me a trick that you had learned as a kid and I recognized the effect. I then started to show you a better way to perform it. And this is all I can remember. Strange, huh? <laughs> No. Yeah, that's strange. It's good. If you guys have any dreams that I show up in, hopefully shirtless with flames behind me, slow motion explosions, that sort of stuff, uh, feel free to let me know. And we'll, we'll end on that one. So the address to send emails to, and thanks for everyone that, that sent them so far, is msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I will answer the best I can. And this has been Q&A 57. And until next time, stay flat.